Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. I hope you had a very good Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, my friends. So very good. And uh, well, we're going to start the class of tonight. As usual, we're going to check about the platform first. So this is the class of today. And uh, here is the question of today. And uh, uh, well, we have the homework that is the 2.5 for tonight. And this is the one that you need to type. Be careful about the spaces, periods, and uh, some symbols that should be exactly the correct one. There are five, and then we have a multiple choice uh, options here. It's going to be also other five questions. So let's do that one. And uh, uh, everybody's working on the platform, right? Everything's fine there in the platform, right? Yes, teacher. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're gonna start by checking the attendance. So Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher, I am moving now, but in five minutes I am in home. Okay, be careful there. Okay. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Suleyma Ibote Hernández. Present. Good. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good. Okay, so we are going to start the class of tonight. Very good. So, uh, what is um, a business presentation, my friends? That is the first question for tonight. What is a business presentation? Mm -hmm. Teacher, yep. for yourself or for our company? What in any company? way, in any kind of business. What is a business presentation in any, in general? Oops. Um, maybe when you can find some, for example, if you have to, if you, if you have salesman, if you, you have a salesman, you have business presentation with the customer or the future customer. This is the one. And um, in the company, if you have a new idea, a new project, you will do it and you uh, build a presentation too. This is it too. And after that, when the when end the when, when end the one project and you have you will have a the feedback information about how many money I sell in that project in the other business presentation. Oh, but how can I do the business presentation? It's a difference because many companies have a protocol. How pronounce protocol? Yeah, protocol. Yeah, uh, protocol. Uh, how will we do it? The presentation with the customer, with the uh, in the own company, with the staff, 
or the new project with the the almost the, with the other manager in the company. This is the this, that I know that the three forms about the business presentation. This is the three that I know. But in the administration of the company, there are many different. There are many different that you can you can find. This is my idea to show. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Erwin. So that is so true. I mean, depending on what you want to do, I mean, it's very common that when you want to sell a product, a company, whatsoever, you want to create a business presentation. Sometimes within the same company, you present about the results of the company and you say something very important. There is a protocol. I mean, it's not just to present, right? There, there are certain things that we need to consider so everything goes well and we're able to, to transmit, to convey the message that we want, the, the impact, to cause the impact that we really want. Very good, perfect. Any other person? What is a business presentation? Well, if you need to give uh, information to a client, if you need to give information to a partner, and even though if you need to give information to the authorities or government, something like that, you need a, uh, I think that is the best way to get the information you need to do. You, you have a, a business project, you have a, uh, the information about the product, about the project. If you are an architect, you have a building or you have a bridge or you have a street. Uh, those uh, things uh, you can explain better with, uh, with uh, pictures uh, and a little uh, uh, text, but uh, it is important. You give the information that the people need to, to see, need to know and uh, you make your business go ahead or you make your partnership strong in that way. Very good, perfect. So very true. So it's very important and uh, it's like a tool is something that allow us to, to present certain points and uh, certain information that is relevant for the people that is there with us, right? Uh, maybe clients, maybe customers, maybe other departments, maybe other companies that are going to work with us, depending on many situations, that is important. Very good. Any other person? Uh, what is a business uh, a business presentation? Teacher, yep. for me, business presentation is uh, where you expose all the information the other part needs to know to buy your product, characteristics, prices, and all, all of all information they know to to have a successful agreement. Very good. So that is that is something very important. You are presenting something for you to have a successful agreement. So you agree with other people, even if you are just presenting or if you are trying to convince uh, somebody, definitely it's very important to, to do the best, not only when you're speaking, but also on, on the way that you are presenting, right? So that is very, very important. Uh, and why it's important uh, to know how to create a presentation for a business. What do you think? Why is it important to know how it's, to create? Uh, go ahead. It's important. It's important because uh, maybe you need to be focused what information you need to transfer to your audience. Very good. You need to identify, well, first of all, the audience, right? Who is going to be yeah. there? And second, uh, what information is relevant, right? So you are going to present that. Good, perfect. Any other opinion? Why is it important to know how to create a presentation, how to deliver a presentation, a business presentation? Well, you do. You need to, to give the right information in the right moment, in the right place. And uh, the best way to communicate is uh, with picture. A picture is, uh, speak more than the words. 
And uh, if you try to explain with words, uh, sometimes it's difficult. But if you uh, get a picture or get an, uh, something that can illustrate like a table of uh, information, you have uh, all the information in a, in, a, in a graph or in a table, um, that is uh, more, more successful to present your information. Yeah, the, I remember the, the first stage of the pandemic time in El Salvador, the president uh, looking for the guy that uh, the, the graph, the graph, what is the graph that, for that, that thing? And, uh, because a graph is <laughs> an important information. You see the graph and you know how is the behavior of, of the situation. And for that reason, it's, it's important. Very well. So yeah, if you present something in a, in a visual way, uh, oh, definitely that is going to help people to understand a little bit better. Uh, as you say, maybe it's, uh, I mean, there are possibilities that you are going to present something just by saying the idea, right? And, uh, but sometimes it's better to, to tell to uh, an audience, but also to present some pictures, some graphics, some uh, information in different ways. Okay, any other? Uh, why is it important to have, or how, to know how to create a presentation, a business presentation? Do you think that is different the way that you do a presentation in English than in Spanish? What do you think? Well, I, I, I see the, I think, I, I don't know an, an expert, but I see the, the English is a, a more a, a objective language, it's more a clear to speak. The Spanish have a many, many uh, uh, <laughs> colloquial phrases that uh, you say many words and don't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, and, and we have a, a problem in Spanish that is uh, the, the double negation. Yeah. In English, that doesn't exist. Uh, in Spanish, we say, I don't have nothing. Exactly. We say in Spanish, but in English, no. I, I have nothing. That is the, the true way to, to say that, that, that kind of phrases. For that reason, I, I, I believe that uh, the English is the, the, the base of the most uh, language of program of, for programming computers, I think. Okay. That because it's a, a, logic, a logic language and it is easy to, to understand and to talk. You can say um, many, many, information with a little words. Okay, very good, interesting. So yeah, you are able to express more with less words. That is good, nice. Uh, anybody else's? I think it's totally different because when you are making a presentation in English, it's because your audience is totally different. It could be people from another, another country, also American people, and they are straight. We, uh, Latin or Hispanic, we are flowering too much. So in that situation, um, when you are doing a business presentation in English, is you are presented the one that I've seen, they uh, contain like uh, the goals, the achievements, the results and the expectations. And they are so visual because mostly you have a presentation that they use too much the, um, um, how they, they call this, uh, they studied a lot. Uh, I also, we have it also in our company, this speech, we, um, the way how we um, make uh, our questions is because uh, they also have people that study the, I don't know if it's correct to say the neurological thing, the yeah. linguistic thing. So they are focused on that. Thing. They are not talking just because talking. Uh, that is the one that I've seen. They are short, they are straight, and always you are looking for a result. Uh, and difference, a difference with the, the other ones I've seen when I was working in companies, in local companies. Uh, here is that 
there are too much pictures, flowering uh, language, and they are not landing in any main idea. They are they don't have like focus. It's just feel the time, and that's it. That is what I've seen. Okay. Very good. So that is true. Yeah, uh, definitely it's not the same, right? Because of many things, because of what you are presenting, the audience makes it very, very different because, I mean, people in English are straightforward, right? They, they want things to be said just the way they are. And uh, I mean, it's... Okay. it's is different, different, definitely. So, well, this week that, well, today, tomorrow, and the next week, we're gonna speak about presentation, how to create presentations and things like that. So it's going to be interesting because of course, at the end of this module, you are going to make a presentation. So it's going to be nice. I want to see that one. So um, any other comment? Uh, is it the same or is it different? Or, and why is different to present in English than in Spanish? What do you think? Okay, so we're gonna start with a little video. Of course, at the end, you're gonna tell me any comments or opinions about that one. Uh, whenever we see videos, it's interesting because we're gonna listen to different accents, right? We're going to of course, try to understand what is the video about, but also we can take in consideration about the pronunciation of some words, uh, some vocabulary that we're gonna listen to, and um, many things. I mean, uh, videos are very enrichment because we are listening to people that speak native English or that they speak English, but they are from different parts of the world. I mean, not from Latin America. Yeah, which is yeah. Okay, so let's see how it goes, my friends. Hi, I'm Gina. Welcome to Oxford Online English. In this lesson, you can learn how to make a presentation in English. Do you have to make presentations in English in your job? Imagine you had to give an important presentation in English tomorrow. How would you feel about it? This lesson will help you learn useful phrases and techniques to introduce yourself and your topic, keep your ideas organized, deal with problems, and respond to questions from audience members. Imagine you're standing in front of your colleagues. You need to introduce yourself and what your presentation is about. What are some words and phrases you could use? If some people in the audience don't know who you are, you should introduce yourself and your position. In a more formal setting, you could say something like this. Good morning, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name's Simon, and I work in the marketing department. Or, hello, everybody. Before we begin, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm Rhys, and I'm the head of HR. If you work in a more informal company, you could say, Hi, guys. If you don't know me, I'm Sylvia, and I work in digital marketing. Or, hello. I see some new faces. So I'll introduce myself first. I'm Julia, and I'm one of our customer service team. Next, you need to introduce your topic. If your presentation topic is simpler, you could just say one sentence like this. Today, I'm going to be talking about our new HR policies and how they affect you. Or, I'd like to talk to you today about quality control and why we're all responsible for quality control, whichever department you work in. If your topic is more complex, you might add more detail to break your idea into stages. For example, I'll begin by outlining the policies, and then I'll go on to highlight what they mean for you and your working habits. Finally, I'll briefly discuss why we feel these new policies are necessary and beneficial for us all. Here's another example. First of all, I'll explain why quality control has a broader meaning than you might expect. I'll continue by giving examples of real quality control and why this matters for all of us. 
To finish, I'll be asking you to think of ways you can incorporate quality control into your working habits. Here, you saw two examples. You can use these as templates to begin your presentation. I'll begin by, and then I'll, finally I'll, or first of all, I'll, I'll continue by, to finish, I'll. Okay, now you can practice. We'd like you to do two things. First, practice introducing yourself informally and explaining your topic in a simple way with one sentence. Then, practice introducing yourself formally and explaining your topic in a more detailed way. Pause the video and practice speaking. All the language you need is in this section. Ready? Let's move on. I'm sure that in your life you've heard good speakers and bad speakers. Good speakers grab your attention and don't let go. You want to hear what they have to say. You feel interested and energized by listening to them. Bad speakers are the opposite. Even if you try to make yourself listen, your attention drifts away. Your eyelids feel heavy and you have to struggle to stay awake. So, here's a question. What's the difference between good speakers and bad speakers? And how can you make sure you speak effectively when you make your presentation in English? Here's one way to think about it. Bad speakers don't think they have to earn your attention. Good speakers understand that no one has to listen to them, so they work hard to make you want to pay attention. What does this mean for you and your presentation? Getting people's attention starts from the beginning. You need to make it clear what people should expect from your presentation and why they should care about what you have to say. Sounds like a nice idea, but how do you do this? Here are three techniques you can use. One, establish a problem that many people in your audience have. Then, establish that you have a solution to their problem. For example, have you ever felt unfairly treated at work? Or felt that the work you do isn't appreciated? We've been working to make new HR policies that will make sure all staff get fair recognition for their contribution to the company. In this way, you can take a boring sounding topic like HR policies and make it more relevant to your audience. How? By connecting it with their experiences and feelings. The second technique? Mention an interesting fact or a surprising statistic to get people's attention. For example, did you know that the average office worker spends eight hours a day at work, but only does four hours of productive, useful work? I'm here to tell you about quality control and how you can use this idea to make better use of your time. Finally, you can engage people by telling a short story and connecting it to your topic. Stories are powerful and they can add an emotional dimension to your topic if you do it well. For example, I once met a young salesman. I won't mention his name. He spent several weeks building a relationship with a potential client. He worked overtime and he was working so hard that he was under severe stress, which started to affect his personal life. In the end, he didn't close the deal. The client signed with another firm. Today, I'm going to talk about confidence as a sales tool and how you can avoid the traps that this young man fell into. Use one of these three techniques in your introduction to connect with your audience and show them why they should be interested in what you have to say. Here's a question for you. Which technique would you prefer to use and why? Okay, now you've introduced your topic and have everyone's attention. What next?
There's a famous quote about making presentations. Tell the audience what you're going to say, say it, and then tell them what you've said. Have you heard this before? Do you know who said it? This comes from Dale Carnegie, a very successful American salesman and writer. He lived a long time ago, but his advice is still relevant today. So, here's a question. What does the quote mean? It means that your presentation shouldn't just give information. You also need to show people how your information is organized. To do this, you need signposting language. Let me give you an example to explain. Imagine you go to a website. The website is full of really useful, interesting information, but the information is all on one page. There's no organization and you have to scroll up and down, up and down this huge page trying to find what you need. Would you stay on that website? Probably not. You'd find a website which made it easier for you to find the information you needed. What's the point here? The point is that having interesting or relevant information is not enough. How you structure and organize your information is equally important. If you don't structure your presentation clearly, people won't pay attention. Just like you won't stay on a website if you can't find the information you want. So how can you do this? You use signposting language. This means using words and phrases to show the audience where your points begin and end, to show what's coming next, and to remind them about things you talked about before. For example, okay, that covers the new policies. Next, I'd like to move on and discuss what these policies mean to you. Or, now that you've heard a bit about what not to do, let's focus on positive advice to help you be more effective salespeople and close more of your leads. When you say something like this, you aren't giving people information about the topic of your presentation. Instead, you're showing people where you are and where you're going next. It's a kind of signpost. You don't need signposts to travel from one place to another, but they can make it easier. What else can you use signposting language for? You can use signposting language to move from one point to the next. For example, next, I'd like to talk about, let's move on and discuss, or at this point, I'd like to turn to. You can use signposting language to add detail to an idea. Let me go into some more detail about, let's examine in more depth, or I'd like to elaborate on. You can use signposting language to show that you finished your main points and you've reached your conclusion. To wrap up, let's remind ourselves of why this should matter to everyone here. Let's review the key points from this session. So, you've heard what I have to say. What conclusions can you take away from this? If you have an important presentation in English, practice using signposting language. Use signposting language to move between points to show when you're giving a summary or going into more detail and to signal that you've reached your conclusion. Okay, but things don't always go so smoothly in real life. We know that. Let's look at some advice and language for dealing with problems during your presentation. Imagine you're making your presentation in English. What could go wrong? What problems could you have? There are many common problems. You might forget where you were or forget an important word. You might realize that you said something wrong or you didn't explain something clearly. You might forget to mention something important. Or someone might ask you an awkward question which you have no idea how to answer. 
Of course, there are other possibilities. Let's think about these problems. What can you do, and more importantly, what can you say in these situations? First of all, it's a good idea to make a cue card with key points as well as any important vocabulary you need. If you lose your place or you forget a word, it could help. However, you can't prepare for everything, so it's useful to learn some phrases to deal with problems smoothly. If you lose your place and can't remember what to say next, you can use a filler phrase like, where was I? So what was I saying? What's the word in English again? If you still can't remember, look at your cue card with your main points. Of course, forgetting something isn't ideal, but if you do, it's better to keep talking rather than just standing there in silence. What if you make a mistake or you realize that you didn't explain something well? You could say, let me rephrase that. Actually, what I meant to say is... To clarify, I wanted to say that... In this way, you can correct yourself without admitting that you made a mistake. What if you realize that you forgot to mention something important? Use a phrase like this. Let me just add one more thing. I'd like to add something to a point we discussed earlier. Let me return to an earlier point briefly. Again, this allows you to correct your mistake in a confident way so you look like you're in control. Finally, what do you do if someone asks you a difficult question which you can't answer? You have a few options. First, you can delay giving an answer. For example, I've allocated time for questions at the end of this session, so we'll address your idea later. Or, I'm not in a position to answer that right now, but I'll get back to you later this week. This gives you time to think of an answer and do some research if you have to. Next, you can deflect the question by asking a question back or maybe by asking other audience members what they think. For example, that's an interesting question. Before I answer, I'd like to know, what's your take on this? Or, you've raised an important point there. What does everyone else think about this? Finally, if the question is irrelevant, you can dismiss the question and move on. For example, Thanks for your input, but I don't see how that's connected to what I'm saying. I don't mean to be blunt, but I don't think that's relevant to today's discussion. Notice how you can use phrases like Thanks for your input, but... or I don't mean to be blunt, but... to make your language more indirect and polite. So, for dealing with difficult questions, just remember the three Ds. Delay, deflect, dismiss. Finally, we want to ask you something. Do you have any advice for giving good presentations in English or any language? We'd love to hear your ideas. Please leave a comment and tell us what you think. Remember to visit our website for more free English lessons, OxfordOnlineEnglish.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay, what did you get from this presentation? From the video and all the tips. Um, really important information that those people share to us because they um, give you uh, some guidance on how you have to create your, your presentation in English. And it's really good, the last part, when they say that maybe uh, one, uh, one person on the audience ask a question that maybe is irrelevant. So how do you can avoid that question? So it's really it's really good because you don't uh, need to be uh, how we call 
how we can call that. You need to be polite when you maybe want to drive some some information to some. Okay. So really, really good. Very good. good. Yeah, that is a, a good tip. I mean, sometimes we don't know what to do when they start talking about things. We said that before. Sometimes in meetings, sometimes people, they start talking about many other things that are not related with the topic that we're discussing. And yes, we need to go straight. I mean, that is a good comment, but it's not relevant for the meeting we're having right now. So, or the presentation or the topic we're presenting. Good, perfect. Uh, any other comment, any other tip that you found relevant, uh, that you found interesting? Okay, well, I think uh, all the information is useful, how to introduce, how to present your point or your argument, and how to deal with the difficult situations. Uh, it is important, uh, how can you use a story? It remember me, uh, and story about uh, Albert Einstein. I don't know if it's true, but it is interesting. Uh, it says that the, the driver of Albert Einstein listened all the conferences of, of Albert Einstein. And uh, the driver uh, learned all of the world, all of the conference, and the driver tell uh, Einstein, I can, I can say what you say. I can give the conference, I can give the speech. Let me try it. And uh, not everybody knows in that time, uh, Albert Einstein, there was no uh, the communication or the media that we have today. And uh, Albert Einstein agreed, okay, the next time you give the speech, you give the, the lecture for, for the people and the driver, the, go to the platform and give the speech like uh, the same Einstein. And there was a guy that made a difficult question. He raises her hand and asks a question and the driver know nothing. <laughs> but the driver says, okay, that is a, a, a very easy question. It's, it's so easy that I give the chance to my driver to answer it and then <laughs> <laughs> the real Einstein came to the States to give the answer. But uh, it is important how to deal with difficult situations. It is it's very useful, this, this video. Okay, that is an interesting uh, story. I never heard that one, actually, and this is something new for me. So, And that is true. I mean, that happens when you are delivering a presentation, or when you are with important clients, customers that they are going to spend a lot of money, and sometimes they have a request or a question that is kind of difficult you need to you need to deal with that at the very moment right i mean it's something that you need to manage right now and maybe it's going to cause an impact for the business that you are making right now so it's a very important thing how to deal with this kind of situations good any other comments any other tip that you found interesting I found interesting the tip for the three Ds when an awakens uh, question come up and and it's a, a situation you are not waiting or, or you are not expected to happen and they recommended the three Ds delay deflecting dismiss and I felt like a rule the way the the, the phrases they were suggesting for example uh, when you don't know how to answer or you are not in the position to answer a question or you are not prepared, you can uh, just uh, say that uh, or, or put it or reflect it that what is the, if that question is not relevant for the topic you are talking about at that moment, you can dismiss it and, and, and but make it public. I don't know, I feel it kind of rude but that is how they are <laughs> they're straight and if this what you are asking is not important so let's move on that is that was very important for me delay deflect and dismiss okay you are right so maybe we feel some things that are not not correct right not proper but mm -hmm. in english as we were discussing before mm -hmm. it's different they are they are direct right i don't like mm -hmm. that one i don't want this Stop doing that one, they say. So 
yeah, uh, if you are going to be with people from other countries, like uh, from the United States, of course, you'll need to be direct and then mm -hmm. try to, uh, they don't want to waste their time. So mm -hmm. we need to, we need to check into that. One. Very good. Perfect. Any other comment, any other opinion about any of the tips that was presented here? Okay, teacher. For example, in the video, they are teach us a lot of useful information, as my partner says. And I have to be honest, and I have never listened about signposting languages. And it's amazing how you can deal when you are doing a presentation. It's amazing. It's a good video, I have to say, okay. because it has a lot of information. Yeah, you know, I was looking for a, a lot of information about this one, and this one was very good as a starting point. I know that there are many things that we're going to learn, and we're, you know, maybe many of these things, uh, but we're going to put in practice down. But this is very complete and present things that are some things that we don't use normally, like the one that you say, some purse, uh, the way that you are going to direct, that you are going to point to different directions. That, that is very good. Good. Any other comments or opinions on the on the video? Teacher, for me, these videos and the other topics uh, is interesting uh, usually because in my world, uh, the client uh, the client, uh, some client uh, asked me a, a, a presentation for next year. I have to do a presentation for a, a new laws in, in the client uh, asked me, uh, could you help, Dori, could you help me with this, this thing in, for my employees? You know, and me, oh my God. And I said at uh, 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 the client, okay, I like it. But in my heart, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know what to, <laughs> what to do. <laughs> but this is, I, I, I watch the video is, is, useful for me <laughs> okay. okay very good perfect sometimes that happens right sometimes you need to do something and you say yes of course this is my job and i'm going to do a very good thing but then then you say what do i do right so <laughs> that's yes. Kind of yes good so that's why we're going to practice all this week that is coming and then we're going to we're going to do a presentation actually so we can see how it's going to how we deal with this kind of situation whenever we come to real life, right? So, good. Any other comments or opinion on the video? Okay, so let's uh, check into some details about the topic for today. So, the first part, uh, let's see, this is going to be for, let's see. Jose Rivas, could you please help me start reading? Not possible, okay. William Ramirez. Okay. Okay. Um, at some point in your life, you must have given a presentation or at least done some sort of public speaking. If you haven't, then at some point you will have to, especially if you are an, an entrepreneur. When it comes to giving presentations, it doesn't matter that you are a seasoned speaker or an amateur, as long as you are able to convey your message or achieve your goal in the most engaging way. And truth be told, even though each presentation has its own several. I don't know how to say that word. Several, yes, several. Several difference. There are a few universal guidelines or the steps that make it ineffective. Uh, but the fact of the of the matter is that given presentation 
especially business presentation. It is not exactly a way in the park and not everyone can easily pull it off. But don't worry, that's why we have got your back. It's this blog we will provide you with the steps involved in creating a killer business presentation and making it a standout. Before we wear the steps involved, let's understand what a business presentation is and why it is important to create one. Ready, let's go. Good, what did you understand on the first part on the introduction? Uh, as a professional, I mean, um, you are, for example, anytime you, you have to, to do a, a presentation or a, uh, just a conference or maybe with a client or your company in general. So it is important to, to know how to do a good presentation because you have to, <clears throat> to have um, a clear idea to, to have the, the information in order and have the the point or the objectives what you want to get and that's it i don't know okay very good so yes uh, as it says maybe you have given a presentation or of course you are going to have the need of presenting sometimes so that's why we're going to check into these kind of things uh, in english definitely so what is a business presentation eliana giselle Not possible, okay. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. What is a business presentation? A presentation is simply an introduction, demonstration, or a speech given by an individual or a group of individuals to an audience in order to inform, inspire, convince, or motivate them. So, a business presentation can be, can be defined as a formal introduction or information about new business, products, ideas, or practices. It is usually car, carried, carried, okay, uh, carried out using audiovisual materials, such as projectors, documents, presentation software, whiteboards, charts, and more. Good, what did you get from this one? Uh, a business presentation is a, it's like a, every presentation is something that is kind of all the presentation maybe we have on our live, we have a lot of presentation of different uh, kinds of, of presentation. Uh, from the college or university, you did you did something like that. But a business presentation uh, is very important because here we, you have to to dominate the topic. To, you have, you have to you have to to uh, organize your ideas, your presentation, your your visual to inspire, convince, or, or you have to. You, have, you are in front of an audience and it depends on the topic. You have to, to speak maybe with a, a small group, uh, a big group, and, and you, you have to be sure that, that you are talking about. Okay. Uh, so sometimes it's on the, uh, you, uh, with some information about maybe sales, about a new product, about maybe a, a, a new strategies uh, a different different kind of information you you can speak about okay very good so that is true and yeah in general presentations are important at any level of life so, i mean everybody at school at the university we had to do some presentations and that is because whenever you are working you need to do a very good job right so at this point, we need to do something very nice, very professional. So it impacts our business in a very good way. 
And it says business presentations are often done with the aim to educate or train the audience, sell a product or an idea to them, or simply convey or share your vision with them. Now that we have explained what business presentations are, let's help you understand the importance of creating one. So yes, as we say before, right? Yeah, sometimes it's to, to train, sometimes uh, to a salesperson, they really want, uh, they really need to, to create presentations so everything's easier for new people to understand products or services. So they are able to decide if they want to get this one. So importance of creating a business presentation that is going to be for a jar being sack. Okay, importance of creating a business presentation. More often than not, a business presentation is the first document or introduction about your organizing or your organization's products and services that your client got to see. So when somebody sit through to a presentation, they expect to get gain some information from it. Without, without dosing, dosing enough, always drop it. That's why it's important that you have a well craft visually appealing and, and gaming business presentation. Okay, so what did you understand on this uh, part, importance of creating a business presentation? When you go in to show a presentation, you have to be or you have to put the, the, the principle or the main information about your company because as is as the article says, for example, is the, the first see that the customer see or watch or is the first information that the customer received about your company. Very good. So it's like the first impression, right? You standing there and speaking about a product or service. So that is very important because you are going to create something in the, in the audience, right? So it's something very, very good. So there are some benefits. Number one says helps create connections. Anna Claudia. All right. Um, starting from helps create connection. Yeah, please. Okay. The business presentation focuses on communication, interaction, and bonding between you and your audience. It allows you to build a good impression and brand image. This not only helps to convey messages and convince your audience, but also establish relationships and creates better connections. Good, what did you get on this one? Totally agree because uh, the focus of this is the communication and the interaction. And as the video we saw, there are some techniques that helps for all of this. And there is a, a goal that you are a uh, focus to get uh, and that is create a, a relationship, a commercial relationship, or maybe, a, a, I don't know, a cooperation or stuff like that. I, I think it applies in any level, it could be government, could be company, could be everything. And the importance of this is built a good impression, totally agree. And that is, for that reason, it's important to use all the visual tools we have. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. So that is so true. I mean, uh, as it says here, I mean, it's an interaction that is going to create a bond, a link. Mm -hmm. so you are going to be connected with the audience. So mm -hmm. it's very important to, to start with the right fit, right? So it's going to be mm -hmm. very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you, I, I know that in the company that I work for, uh, they invest a lot of money in uh, professionals that study all these communication, linguistic things, neurological things. You just don't imagine how they spend money in those things. Not only for advertisement, it, it also uh, internally for us, how to uh, handle a customer, overcome an objection, and also how to um, write an email or a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very true. I mean, every part of the business is uh, important and communication is mm -hmm. something that is relevant, right? Uh, and you are right. I mean, your business is about communicating things, right? So 
and the way that you are going to send emails to create a presentation to to transmit to convey a message is totally mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. good perfect thank you number two says provides information that is going to be for let's see Zulay Maivon not possible okay Jose Wilfredo Which one, teacher? Number two, please. Okay, provides information. It says, a good presentation is highly informative and I open. It's a great opportunity to give our nuggets of details, facts, trivia, and statics baked data. It provides the listener with information in the most engagement in a way, which means that they walk out a better informed and edu educate persons. Okay, what do you get on that one? Um, this is how you present or how you provide your information. Uh, maybe when you need to clarify some points, so you need to be specific about, uh, about that point. Uh, to give some details and also um, uh, ask or provide some trivia about the, the audience can think a little bit about your topic. Okay, so yes, definitely. So this is the uh, a very good opportunity to provide relevant information, right? So anything that is relevant everything is that is going to impact the audience that are going to make them decide what are they're going to do or uh, to to go to the objective that you want at the end of the presentation so it's a very good thing okay before we move on to number three we're going to stop and check about the attendance because it's nine already so let's see Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Andrés Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Okay. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good, perfect. Let's continue then. So let's see. I'm gonna present. Okay. Okay. So number three offers inspiration. Jessica Janari, is it possible for you? Not possible. Erwin Lagos.
Number three. Yes, please. Okay. Offers inspiration. The impact a good business presentation can be on an individual is far more than you can imagine. See, most business presentations involve the use of the audiovisual materials, stores, and anecdotes, and out pamphlets and demonstration. It tends to stick the minds of the listeners, it keeps them engaged, offer inspiration, and help influence their decision. Good. What did you understand in this one? You can sell your mind, you can sell your idea, your project with the audience. If you, if you first, you have to believe that your idea. Second, after, you have to express your idea, a good presentation. After that, you can think about marketing, uh, personal marketing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, definitely. You are going to express your ideas. You are going to sell, actually, not only the product, but yourself, right? But, but, but many people, uh, many people, when you began to uh, uh, a presentation, got angry in the presentation because yeah. many persons say, "Hey, I think that uh, it's an I know okay because it, and the and the and, and the." The, the, the personal uh, think, oops, uh, and got angry. Is it, when you began, and many people began at the, at the presentation, many times, repeat, will, uh, will be angry in that moment. Yeah, that is true. So that is not a good thing. And of course, the results of the presentation are not going to be good, right? Yes. Good, perfect. Thank you very much. So. It's a very good way for you to inspire. And it says clearly business presentations are an effective way to get across your message and build your brand. They are definitely rewarding and crucial for your business. And since we don't want to keep you waiting, let's jump straight into the uh, nitty gritty of creating a business presentation. So this is like the plan, actually the, the plan, how to create a business presentation in nine simple steps. So number one is going to be for, let's see, for uh, David, Samuel. Step one, create a plan. The first step in creating an excellent business presentation is to make a plan about what you want to do and how exactly you want to do it. For this, it is always good to set a goal that you seek to achieve, to achieve through your presentation and then create a roadmap of how you want to achieve it. In a business presentation plan, you create an outline of your presentation and decide what message you want to convey and the main points and arguments you want to include. Divide your presentation into an introduction, the main sections, in a conclusion and further incorporate sub points within each section. This will allow you to easily split your content into a consumable format with a plan ready in hand. Your presentation will sail through smoothly. Good. What did you understand on this one? Okay, this is important for everything you do. Make a plan, make an outline what you want to do, what uh, you want to say. What do you need to emphasize? And what is the final message you want to add? You need to put this final message in, in, in a clear way. And when you have an outline, you can uh, structure uh, the time, you can structure the, the things you need to say, and you can emphasize the, the main point you want to say to the audience. Very good. So definitely, as you say, a plan is needed in everything, right? So of course, if you are going to create a presentation, uh, you need to think about what is this going to be about, how is going to be the starting point, how is going to be the the message and the conclusion. So, and uh, if you divide your presentation 
into that kind of things, of course, it's going to be good. So number two, spend some time a, on your presentation slides. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dora Elizabeth, please. Step two, spend some time on your presentation slides. Is your presentation even a presentation without visual slide projected in the background? It is a must have a every business presentation and that's why you need to invest a little time in how to they look. Choose a professional looking slide deck that matches the one the tone of your presentation go for colors that suit your brands or products colors and avoid too many flash colors also try to pick up phone and phone site that aligns with your brand or organization make sure that you select your presentation a slide text based on the content that you are dealing with, such as using a professional or neutral slide text for financial data or research topics, a colorful slide text for information, informal topics. Good, so what did you understand on this one? Uh, for better presentation is necessary helps with a visuals presentation, the visual is very important. In this case, it's a slice. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you need to invest some time in designing your presentation, right? Actually, yeah. uh, one of the classes is going to be dedicated to this. So you, you need to think you need to really mind about certain things. So the presentation actually is good, right? Okay. Very good, perfect. Number three, this is going to be establish your credibility with a story. So this is going to be for Heidi. Okay, teacher. Step three, establish your credibility with a story. Whenever you start a presentation, it is extremely crucial that you establish your credibility right up front, right up front, because people are more likely to listen to you if you are convinced about your authenticity. No, this doesn't mean that you don't on about your career highlights. Instead, you lead your business presentation with a complete com Compelling story. This could be anything about the background of your topic, an experience, a re reliable story, an anecdote, or any other references that support your subject and make it more interesting. This is where you can also add a little humor to get a laugh out of them and put them at ease by setting a positive tone. Doing so will help you engage with the audience, build a personal connection, and serve as a memorial foundation for your presentation. Very good, perfect. What did you get in this? Uh, I think, uh, as it says, uh, you, can, you can present your product through uh, success stories, right? And not, not being so uh, telling too much jokes, but trying to make it uh, not fun, but interesting. Interesting with the right stories. Very good. So definitely, if you believe in what you are saying, it's going to be easier, right? To connect with the audience. So they really understand your point of view. They really believe that the product or service that you're selling or the, uh, anything that you're presenting is good. So that is a very important thing. Good, number four, step four, support your claims. Uh, this is going to be for Roxana. Support 
your claims. You may have established your credibility with a story or an anecdote, but if you really want to create an authentic image, image then you need to back up all your clients during your presentation. So don't not hesitate to use supporting materials like, like liberally. Liber Sorry? Liberally. Liberally, thank you. This means that you provide statistics and numbers, refer reference research of or offer proof supporting your claims. This will cement your credibility and authenticity. Good, what did you understand on this one? Uh, let me see. Maybe uh, when you have a presentation, um, you have to maybe create a guide about uh, some uh, some uh, maybe real cases or um, supporting your presentation with um, maybe personal experience and maybe you 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 can um, like uh, be personal with um, a specific uh, situation and try to share in the in the maybe in the um, yeah in the personal way but uh, try to um, include uh, the rest of the audiencia, how to say audiencia, or at the, at the other person try to uh, share some uh, experience and try to live uh, that experience by him, themselves. And uh, I imagine that uh, it's easy when uh, you try to explain a topic and involve the rest of the person with personal experience because they get more information about, uh, about that topic, maybe. Okay. Very good. So yes, uh, whenever you are going to present any topic, uh, if you are going to present things related to a market or to a product or an industry, you need to research and present some figures, right? To present some numbers, some percentages, some statistics, uh, or some facts that are going to support what you're saying. So that is very, very important. And it's going to provide you credibility on that. Good, number five says use visual elements uh, liberally. That is going to be for Francisco Eduardo. Step five, use visual elements liberally. This presentation can get boring if you slide, just have text, numbers, and tables. Not just that, that is make it difficult for your audience to simultaneously read and listen to your presentation. That's why you need to use visual elements like image, chart, graphic, GIF, and more. Adding powerful quotes for screen images and videos will stick in the mind of your audience and will help maintain, main, maintain their attention throughout, not to mention, it simply makes your presentation visual appealing. Good, what did you understand on this one? Um, I, I understand that the, when uh, if uh, make a, a business presentation or a professional presentation, uh, the idea is try the, the, the people in, the, in this room 
can get it, get in the, the most uh, uh, information. And uh, I remember that uh, uh, I uh, listened that the, the, the people uh, can be uh, uh, pay attention around 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, is it around 20 minutes uh, is when the uh, the mind is is fresh for 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 uh, uh, receive that information and in in the uh, when uh, in a presentation uh, include a image uh, include a, a video uh, is probably that the the experience change and the it is in maybe uh it's not uh not a boring uh a boring presentation teacher very good so that is it i mean yes uh you need to 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 provide life to the presentation right so it's it's nice to see it is is interesting as we said before so sometimes just a lot of words and a lot of numbers are not that that good i mean sometimes it's relevant but then you need to play for, with certain things there so everything is going to be visually nice right good number six says add animation to your presentation slides that is going to be for fernando Gonzalez. Oh, not possible. Okay. So let's see. We're going to start all over. Okay. Um, then David Galdames, please. Okay. Step six add animations to your presentation slides. Obviously, your format and content matter more. And if they are the cake, then adding a little animation or cinematic style to your slide is like the cherry on top. It simply makes your presentation a little more appealing. Include phone animation and smooth transitions. Move around your slide horizontally and vertically and let your content appear on the screen creatively. This will allow you to tell your story effortlessly. Just try not to go overboard with the animation and make sure to strike a balance while maintaining consistency throughout. Good, what do you get on this one? Okay, it is important to, to give the message, but uh, don't forget that uh, you are the center of the presentation, not your slides, not, not your multimedia. You are the centers. And uh, the people not uh, uh, need to stay all the time saying the, the, the media. You need to add some things like animation, like image, like pictures to make the presentation a, a appealing, like the, say the, the paragraph. But you need to catch the attention to the people in you. Not, not overboard, not overboard with animation, not overboard with text, because sometimes uh, we put so many texts in the presentation and we only read. That is not a presentation, that is, is reading, it's is not the way. You need to put some uh, uh, strategic phrases, some strategic points, and the rest of the information is given by you when you are doing the presentation. It is important to, to, to make a balance, not to be boring only speaking you. Right? And the people need to see the, the slides and to see you. And, and that is important. Make a balance and uh, make interesting, but not overloading. That is important, I think. Very good. You use a very nice word, balance. Yes, you need facts, you need numbers, you need words, but also you need some colors, some animations, uh, depending, of course, of how formal is the, the business that you're running. But it's important that one. So there is a balance where not only one person speaks, but a lot of people are in interaction, right? So that is good. 
Good, number seven. Uh, this is for Erwin Lagos. Number seven. Let me a moment, please. Okay. Of course. Be prepared for question. No, no presentation is ever complete with round of question and adverb season towards the end. So it's always best to be prepared for any difficult question that might be asked. Your job is to anticipate all possibility questions of concern that your audience might have and consider all possibility objects and argument, objection, sorry, objection and argument that might arise during, during the uh, discussion. I'm prepared as well for them. You can even get a college to listen in your presentation. I have a specific season for this. Okay, what did you understand on this one? Okay, teacher, when you have a, a, a one idea, okay, when you have an idea, there are many probability that other person say that your idea will have a bunk or we have a problem in the future. And you try to think about which one, which one question maybe will the audience will do it, maybe. Maybe. And after that, you try to suppose that question, you write, you think about this one, and you have now how to answer so fast, yeah, with your audience. But you prepare it before, but all those possibility maybe you can be held in your presentation. Because your idea is okay for you, but not for other people. You have, you have a mistake made because only the world is perfect. This is, a, this is a, the most emotional uh, uh, idea that you can have in mind. Very good, so that is so true. Yes, you are going to have a statement and you are convinced about what you're gonna speak and about the product that you have. But of course, people might have some questions and you need to be ready for them. Um, I remember a, a while ago when I was going to a lot of a lot of training decks and things like that, um, there was a, a strategy that some people made. Uh, it was interesting. Is that they had the presentation and everything set, but in the entrance, when you were entering the, uh, the hotel on the, what is going what works going to be the presentation they give you questions to you so they are sure that you were going to ask questions so that was a very interesting thing good number eight says prepare questions so this is going to be for a uh, jessica Gennari. is possible for you which one teacher number eight prepare please. questions yeah okay Step eight, prepare questions. It's crucial to remember that some of your audience might not have any question for you. This can obviously create an outward. Did you yeah, outward? Outward, yeah. Okay, outward moment for you when you open the floor to questions. For that reason, is it is important that you prepare your own your own set of questions in advance here you can incorporate audience interaction by asking questions to your audience quizzing them asking them to vote making them participate in simple activities and more doing this will help you avoid our houses and silence while also creating an open environment of active participation and discussion. I think it's really important to prepare a question because um, maybe that meeting, uh, in some case, um, sounds um, a little boring for, uh, for some people. Uh, if you have questions, you do 
and and the the person uh, make uh, some makes some question for for the people for the other people for and and this is the um, method uh, for and uh, the person knows if all people uh, pay attention or, or it's clear about the um, uh, about whatever discussions i think very good so that is it. I mean, uh, you are so right. We need to be ready about that one. Prepare some questions. Ask questions to audience. Uh, so they to check if they got the idea or if they really understood the things that we were talking about. Uh, you can vote. They can. You can create simple activities so they can participate. So that is going to give you also a feedback on what happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, in some class, some class and uh, the that kind that kind of activities i think is is relevant uh, for for the for uh, for for all uh, students and because uh, for example you make uh, some question about us about this topic or whatever that is so true, very good. So uh, that is a technique that always works. So you are going to have everybody participating and also to, to analyze what's going on with the presentation, right? Okay, number nine, wrap up with a closing statement. Uh, Jose Rivas, is it possible for you? Sorry, which one? Number nine, please. Number nine, okay. Team. Okay, once all the questions have been asked and when all the discussions come to an end, so you need to include a short closing statement for your presentation. Be sure to prepare a summarized statement that includes your ma main message, key point, and final call to actions. Uh, follow this step and you will have prepared a fantastic business presentation for your audience. So, but the fact in that no matter how good are you at a pool speaking, there are always room for improvement. Improvement. What, what you need are some simple steps to make your killer presentation even better. And for that, we have com compiled Compile, compile, right? Compile, yeah. Okay, compile for your list that you can follow. Scroll, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So, what did you understand on this uh, in this part? Okay, let's see. Okay, so. And actually that at the end, so we had to like wrap up. So something that actually that is the main reason for the presentation and also to like to include some keywords so that at the end, so it will make the difference like to get more like unknowledgeable. So getting the, the, the words and so, and at, uh, that word said a tip to make it your killer presentation even better, right? So as okay. much words, so we, we are saying like in a good way, so for the main reason for the presentation, so it will be like understandable. Okay, very good. So yeah, definitely whenever you finish the presentation, there should be a closing, right? So it depends on what you want to achieve. Uh, there should be something nice at the very end. So that is very, very important whenever you are doing this kind of things. Good. So tips for creating an awesome business presentation. Uh, Roxana, could you please help me read this part? Okay. Let me see. 
tips for creating an awesome business presentation. Here are some simple tips that you must follow during your business presentation. Keep your presentation crisp, crisp, and crisp. try crisp, 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 and try not to include too many slides for your presentation. Avoid using too many colors and fonts. Instead, stick to a color palette and from that map your attire, 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 uh -huh. attire and your brand image. Do not hesitate to seek the help oh. of presentation tools and software. Oh. Focus, fo focus on your narration and storytelling style. Ask rhetorical question to reinforce your key points and primary message. Prepare some business appropriate jobs. One liners, one light liners and fun to make your presentation fun and engaging, engaging. Engaging. Engaging, thank you, engaging. Dress in formal business attire and groom, groom yourself to look appealing and presentable. Maintain, ma, yeah, maintain, maintain yeah. a, a def, defina, the defining. Meaning? Defining, thank you. Maintain a defining tone and style for your presentation. Be formal, casual, or humorous. Humorous, humorous, and try to be consistent with with it throughout. Be enthusiastic and expressive. Focus in your body language and most importantly, might maintain eyes contact throughout. With that, we can guarantee guarantee that you will put on one hick of a presentation and give your audience a memorable and enrich enriching experience. Good. What did you understand on this one? Well, in the first, uh, in the first time, uh, it's important um, your personal presentation because uh, it's the maybe the um, first no, como la la primera la su primera impresión. First impression. First impression, yeah. So uh, you you need to be carefully with your uh, dressing, okay. and it's important uh, the corporal language when you are in front of the audience, and you need to be a lot of carefully with uh, some examples when you are try when you try to explain a topic because uh, you need to uh, looking for a little job or real history, but not, um, yes. maybe not a negative or be carefully with the racism yes. or something like that. So you need to uh, organize your topic and your um, examples and try to don't uh, offend to others. And the other hand, uh, it's important uh, the way that uh, you are uh, working in your presentation, uh, because uh, for example, if you have a, a slice in your presentation with a lot of text, maybe the audience uh, will be lost the, the enthusiasm, maybe. 
and they lost the interest about the topic. So you need to uh, organize your uh, point presentation maybe with um, maybe with the principles or the main tips or topic or I don't know, uh, maybe with the main ideas and try to explain according to that uh, way because uh, if you are talking a lot or if you are uh, presenting a lot of text or a lot of imagine, maybe the audience will be, feel lost and you can't share the main idea. That is. Okay, very good. So, uh, yes, there are many things uh, that we need to consider when you are going to when you are going to present anything, right? So this is in general. Of course, for business, it's a little bit more formal, uh, but mm -hmm. these are for everyone. I mean, keep your presentation crisp and try not to include too many slides for the presentation. In mind that you go to a meeting and there are a hundred slides. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. say, I'm gonna be here forever, right? So yeah, that is not mm -hmm. that good, right? Avoid using too many colors and fonts and that stick to a color palette depending on what you want to achieve, but yeah, two colors is good enough. And depending if it's going to be environmentally, for example, greens, uh, or depending on many other things, right? But too many colors is not going to be good. Do not hesitate to seek the help of presentation tools and software. Yeah, there are a lot of things that you can do. There are a lot of recommendations that uh, softwares about this one can help you with narration and storytelling style so you know the way that you speak right so everybody mm -hmm. have different ways of speaking and i know that sometimes speaking in public for some people is nice i mean for me since i was a kid was not a problem i i really liked to go in front sometimes i say i want to i want to go in front right so and speak and on my my uh, friends, they say, no, I don't want to. So I was the one. But for other people, it's not like that. So for other people, it's like, I hate to speak in public. So you need to have a style. You need to have a way mm -hmm. for you to speak so you can manage any situation, right? And ask rhetorical questions to reinforce key points. That is a key one. So whenever you are speaking, you point to somebody and what do you think about this or oh, do you remember that it's like this any kind of question and rhetorical are, are the best for this uh, jokes well that depends that depends on many things i mean if you are very funny and you want to do one or two jokes might be fun depending on the presentation if it's a business one probably it's not a good idea right Okay, uh, dress in formal business attire yeah because we're talking about business so uh, of course, depending on the company or the other company that you're going to speak with, uh, it's going to be, it might be variable, right? So uh, maintain a defined tone and style for presentation. Definitely. You need to continue. You need to have like a tone of voice. You need to uh, have energy whenever you're speaking. So that is very important. And of course, be enthusiastic and expressive. So body language is very important when we are presenting. So definitely that is something that we need to take care of. Many things, of course, we're going to continue speaking about some of these things. Okay, and there is a conclusion that is going to be for, let's see, Giselle. Not possible, okay. Uh, let's see, Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay, uh, conclusion. Presentations are all about communication. So it doesn't matter it is, if it is your first presentation or your hundred, hundred one. If you are not available to communicate information in an um, engaging in a way, then you end up wasting your time and your listener's time. Uh, whether you are trying to sell something to an audience 
or simply sharing your vision with them, create a business presentation that will not only educate your listener, but also squeeze a lot of them. We only hope that the steps and tips we have provided you will help you along the way in creating a clear business presentation for your audience. Audience. Uh, adios and happy presenting. Present. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Uh, that 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 said, uh, no, no matter uh, the, the the information or maybe the peers or the hundred one. Uh, always we have to 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 prepare to prepare a, a presentation. You have to study about the the topic or maybe the the product, the business that you you are going to presenting to present uh, to an, an audience and you have to to speak clear about it and maybe pre pre prepare yourself that is very important i think always because uh, when you are in a presenting you 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 feel with for example i i had been in uh, as an audience audience and when we are in a in a presenting, we know when the maybe the presenter is nervous or, or maybe the presenter doesn't know what he's talking about. So that is very important. You, maybe with when you are uh, doing different presentation, okay. you you get experience about it, and always we we will do better. Hundred. That's it. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Fernando. Very interesting, actually, what you say. Definitely, we need to be ready, right? We need to analyze, we need to research, we need to uh, put a very nice presentation so we're going to uh, get the results that we're looking to get. And you say something that is also very interesting. When we are the audience, we know, right? We know uh, if the person, they don't know anything about what they're talking about, or if they're nervous, or uh, I don't know, many things. If they didn't research, if um, if they, I mean, there are many things that you can identify. So every time that we go to a training or a presentation, that happens. We are always, everybody is like thinking, how is going to be the presentation? What we're going to learn if the if presentation is going to be boring. Sometimes it's going to be four hours, six hours, eight hours in a, in a training. And I mean, that is a challenge, right? Uh, for both for the presenter and also for the audience uh, to pay attention, to learn, and for the presenter to, to provide different aspects in different ways with different strategies. So you cannot just speak and speak, right? That is not gonna work. So there are many things that we need to consider on this one. And uh, uh, if you are prepared, I mean, everything will be fine, definitely. Good, good. So uh, we're gonna move on and we're gonna watch our little video. And of course you will provide a feedback about this one. So here we go. Let's take a look at the difference between writing a document versus making a presentation in business. Writing a document and delivering a report both require you to one, research your topic, two, plan your organization, and three, choose your language and visuals carefully. There are, nevertheless, some fundamental differences between these two ways of communicating in the world of work. When you make a presentation, you must focus on these additional items. Your appearance, how you dress, stand, move, and gesture. Your delivery, whether you can be heard, your tone of voice, and whether you sound confident or nervous. The complexity of your subject. Your talk must be informative, yet concisely and easily understood in the first and likely the only time your audience hears it. The amount of time you've been allotted and your audience's attention span, usually not more than 15 or 20 minutes. Presentations in the workplace are about getting things done. If you're familiar with the standards of business writing, that will sound familiar as business writing and speaking share the same fundamental elements. 
Here are some presentations you can expect to make frequently before different audiences in the world of work. Presentations for your customers or your clients. Sales appeals stressing how and why your company's products or services meet the listener's needs. Scenarios about why your company is better than the competition. Demonstrations of your products or services and tours of a company facility. For your boss, like a progress or a status report on how a project is going, an assessment of your job accomplishments, a justification of a budget, your own position, or your department and division, as well as a summary or of a conference or a meeting that you attended. For your coworkers, like an end of the shift report, such as those made by police officers and nurses, an explanation of new or revised policy, a training session about job safety, operating equipment or new software, or a briefing about new job assignments or tasks. For community leaders or groups, like appeals before elected officials, an explanation of your group's decision or activity, and an update on completing a public works project. Successful business presentation begins with recognizing that initially your audience does not care much about your information or what you want to accomplish. The reality is your audience cares about how your information affects them. Informal presentations usually last between 10 and 15 minutes and are given to a small group of coworkers and possibly to your boss. Whatever the topic, informal briefings bring people up to date by supplying them with key information. When you have to make an informal briefing or presentation, use the following guidelines. First, prepare. Though your talk is short, never speak off the cuff. Do some research, like speaking with your boss and your team members, reviewing procedures, and so on. Next, describe your main points. Write down a few key items you want to cover and keep this list or outline before you as you speak. Highlight key names, terms, dates, or places. Avoid information overload. Do not crowd too many points into one presentation. Be highly focused. Include only relevant examples that your audience can easily apply to solve a particular problem or clarify a work-related issue. Your audience may be on a strict timetable and have obligations to fulfill later in the day, so be concise. Stay positive. Even when you have unpleasant news to impart, like a project delay, resist blaming or lecturing your audience. Instead, concentrate on the positive steps needed to resolve the problem. Don't overwhelm your listeners with visuals. Target only two or three main points to illustrate. Be sure to allow time at the end of your briefing for questions, comments, and suggestions. Thank listeners for their time and cooperation. Be prepared to make creative and captivating informal business presentations. In comparison to an informal briefing or informal presentation, a formal presentation is much longer, far less conversational, and perhaps intended for a wider audience. The more you learn about your audience, the better prepared you will be to give your listeners what they need. Presentations should consist of a few important components. Let's take a look at each. The introduction. The most important part of a presentation is the introduction. You can capture your audience's attention by answering these questions. Who are you? What are your qualifications? What specific topic are you speaking about? And how is the topic relevant to the audience? In the body, make it persuasive to your audience by doing the following. Explaining the process, describing the condition, solving a problem, or arguing a case. Plan your conclusion as carefully you do your introduction. An effective conclusion should leave the audience feeling that you and they have come full circle and accomplished what you've promised. Presentation skills are fundamental at getting things done on the job. Okay, what did you get from this video?
it's, it's like a summarizing of all what we've been talking about or talking before. You need and don't overload your presentation. You need to be clear what are you talking about. And uh, you need to, to, to take the control of the presentation, not, not to lose the control, to, to do the things uh, as uh, better as possible. It is important. And focus on the things do you want to say. I think this is important. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So yeah, you need to to stay clear on what you want to present, uh, to not overload presentations. Those are points that were relevant in this video. Any other comment on the video? Yeah, uh, according to the topic, you have to work in a little introduction because um, you have to uh, be clear when you try to uh, explain it the first time. If you give uh, only the topic, maybe uh, it's a little um, like a, a, a aggressive, maybe. And you try to uh, be more um, friendly with your explanation so you need to the first time you need to be clear with uh, your information but you have to uh, work in a in a little introduction for your audience okay very good actually yeah i really like that part on the video to be honest with you and they say that introduction is one of the most important part mm -hmm. i mean it's yes. because it's when you start, when you get mm -hmm. the attention of the audience, right? If if in the introduction, everybody says, oh, this is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? You're, you're lost. And yeah, you, you need to be uh, carefully because uh, depending on your introduction, the audience receive that if the topic is interesting or boring. That is it. So that mm -hmm. first impression is going to be mm -hmm. very, very important that everybody's going to say, oh, this is interesting, or I'm going to pay attention just to check, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. if you don't do a good introduction, yeah, definitely you're going to lost. You Maybe not the all of them, but a lot mm -hmm. of the people in the audience. So that is not good at all. Okay. Any other comments about the video that we just uh, watched? It's interesting, teacher, because the in the video is talking about how to beat your attitude if I am not wrong. And for example, it is to tell the point that you be focused when you are doing a presentation. And it is so important to be prepared for that. That is true. So uh, yes, I mean, uh, definitely we need to research, we need to to know what we're gonna talk about. I mean, sometimes, yeah, I know that we don't have much time, but speaking about your work or speaking about a business, definitely you need to do a lot of research depending on the kind of, of the presentation that we're gonna deliver the audience, the moment, the product services or processes that we were going to explain. Yeah, we need to, we need to be ready, right? So it's not only a matter of you too to be there in front of people and just because you have experience start, start talking. No, that is another thing that even if you have all the experience in the world, if you are not able to, to express yourself properly, if you are not able to transmit, the, to come be the message, I mean, at the end, it won't matter that you are a, an expert or anything like that. Good, any other comments or opinion about the video? Nothing else, okay? So this is like the first class about presentations. As I was telling you, uh, we are going to uh, be working on this one. So today we checked about why it's important to create presentations. Also, we 
no one really that is not the same to present to in Spanish or in English, right? Uh, the audience is also something that is a very important factor. So we're going to identify the best strategy for us to deliver the presentation. And also we check some tips, some steps for you to create a very nice presentation. So uh, do you have any questions about the class of today? No questions. Okay, so let's check the attendance and let's go to bed, my friends. So, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. <laughs> Sorry, my, my mic was off. <laughs> ah, don't worry. Uh, Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. I'm present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. For you is the one of one of today, Giselle, just in case. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Teacher. Yep. Uh, may I stay for the last 10 minutes today? Because okay. we are in the end of the month and we have to do the inventory tomorrow. And I, th I think I will work at until late tomorrow. Okay, no and worries. I here, but uh, as a listener. Of course, of course. So definitely. So you can stay today and tomorrow is going to be yourself. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejia. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow at Dream in English. Thank you, teacher. Bye bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Okay, hello, Jarvin, how are you? Okay, hello, teacher, I'm great. Perfect, Sorry, nice. but the camera is a little bit. Uh, don't but, worry, that is I fine, that is fine. No <laughs> worries at all. Okay, very good. So I, I know that you have experience already in the one on one. So the first question I have for you is, do you have any questions about this module or the previous modules? No, uh, about the models, I don't have any question because everything is clear. I have to say thank you because the way that you teach the class is amazing. I like it. It's not boring. I, I have to be honest with you. And it's the great, the great way because you made me ask to participate and it's amazing. 
for because I say that because for me it's difficult to read, and you are I practice it so it's amazing. Very good. I'm very happy that you like it, and of course, you know I try to do different activities. Actually, tomorrow is going to be just English practice, no business. Uh, I, I know that maybe you won't be able to participate, but if you pay attention and or if you have some minutes for, to participate, that would be amazing. But I try to change, you know, I try to change different things and your feedback is very important. So thank you for your for your words. Thank you, teacher. Very good. And uh, are you working already in the platform? I I did. I will I will work on platform uh, this weekend. Okay. Uh, this is a question that I have for you. I have to complete the first session and the second session or both or use this the first session. Well, by now the first unit has to be done. And then uh, the second one is going to be half. We are exactly on the half of the second unit. The second unit is larger, you know, because uh, it's going to be for two weeks. And then uh, we're going to finish that, let me think. Not this Monday, but the next Monday, we're going to finish the second unit. So okay. my best advice for you is to, to finish the first unit. And by the next week, at the end of the next week, you can finish the second unit. And then you can continue move on. If by any chance you see an error in the platform, sometimes that happens, let me know so I can report that. Yes, I will, I will check it and I let you know if I found some mistake in the platform. Very good, perfect. So, and uh, how do you think that you are moving on? Do you do you feel that you are learning, that you are getting something? Yes, I, I feel more comfortable when I speak in English. I know that I make a lot of mistakes, but I I feel that I learn. Really, I I feel that, and I I miss the class because we passed one month without any class. And I feel great to, to stay here and study and learn, it, of course. Very good. I'm very happy that you are motivated. So that is very important. And uh, of course, it's a pleasure to be with you. So regarding English, uh, which skill is the one that you believe that you need to improve? I mean, speaking, reading, writing, uh, listening. I think that I... Uh... I have to improve everything, <laughs> but the, uh, who, who can I say my weaknesses? See, I think my debilidades. Weaknesses, huh? Uh, weaknesses is listening and reading. No, I think thanks. this is my, because when I, for example, here in El Salvador, we have a special accent. And when I listen some some person speaking English, is is it is to understand but when I heard some accent that it's a little bit difficult I don't get it the, the principal idea is yes, a little a little bit difficult for to me to to understand everything okay yeah I, that is kind of normal I mean um, I, I remember that I made an exercise where uh, we were presenting uh, an ex uh, this was very interesting guess the accent guess the country where this person is from right and uh, yeah. the most of the people they get i remember that you got uh, english accent and american accent but the other accents we didn't and that is because when we watch movies almost always is either from england or from the united states right all the tv comes from there uh, but in youtube for example you can you can take the time and research and uh, get people from different accents, different regions. Uh, so you will be getting more familiar with that. Uh, also, I remember that we, uh, maybe not in this and the previous one, I guess, uh, we check about slangs from other countries. So yeah, there are many ways that you can do to, to practice those little things, uh, different accents, different vocabulary, different ways of expressing. That is something that is going to help you a lot. Yes, it's a little bit difficult to me because I work, I have to say, I work uh, reading English almost every single day. So I don't know why I, I get at everything, but I am trying. I am, when I have time, I, I watch a video. And of course, I am trying to improve my English. 
Very good. If you continue doing that one, my friend, you are going to get there. You are going to, to be very, very good. Actually, um, I, I have heard the way that you read, the way that you speak, and it's very good. Uh, yeah, you are confused sometimes in some words, but it's not that much. If you continue doing that one, if you continue uh, watching videos, reading, uh, participating in class or if you have uh, other people to to practice with uh, other people like in your job or in the family that is going to be very good very important for you but if you continue doing that one of course you are going to make it okay i will still working on that definitely it's a pleasure whenever you have a question remember that you can chat with me uh in the group or uh, personally i mean uh, directly with me and it will be a pleasure to help you Okay, thank you, Tisha. Perfect. So any other thing that uh, you want to ask or if you have any other question? No, maybe if you can recommend some special teacher in YouTube for listening, I will always say thank you for that. Okay, to be honest with you, my recommendation for you is to, to listen to different ones. So you are going to have different, uh, different tips, different accents, different ways. So that is going to be the best. Try to do different things. Maybe my problem is that when I was watching video and I got it anything, uh, I put the, the subtitles. So I think I prefer to, to, to read that, listen. Uh, I be focused to read and not listen. And so. What you can do is this, you can start, uh, if you really want to understand, you can get the subtitles in English, watch the video once, and then watch the video again without the subtitles. So you identify the words. Okay. Okay. Very good. Perfect. So it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you. Have a great day. So do you. Bye-bye now.